everybody hi welcome back to my youtube channel thank you so much for watching i really appreciate every one of you here who are just clicking on this video and supporting me it really means a lot <laughs> today i wanted to talk with you have a little brief sit down talk about how to sleep better i know this is a huge topic because Millions of people struggle to sleep everywhere, and there are many, many ways that you can improve your sleep, um, which is a critical, critical component to your health, which is why I wanted to mention it, because a lot of content on my channel is health, fitness related, um, and sleep is definitely a huge factor into your health. So I'll be looking down at my notes here a little bit if you see me kind of looking down. I feel like I have somewhat mastered a sleep routine um, to the best that I can just from trial and error and kind of me realizing that if I don't sleep properly the next day I will not be functioning at my full capacity mentally <laughs> or emotionally and I really believe if you don't serve yourself first you cannot serve others effectively and I do not want to show up to somewhere the following day of a bad night of sleep not my full self and not being able to give my full self to someone be able to fully empathetically listen give my full attention to them enjoy life to the fullest i am just completely messed up if i do not get good sleep and i know lots of people feel the same way and are really sensitive to kind of getting bad sleep um though there are people i've met who don't need to get much sleep or they've kind of trained their body to get not that much sleep which is kind of crazy to me <laughs> but i know that it is possible so anyway for me here are kind of my tips so firstly having a nighttime routine is really important um for me i've kind of had this developed since i was like 10 years old probably because that's when i started taking allergy medicine um i started taking zyrtec and nasonex every night and i still do <laughs> uh, i have really bad allergies so I got used to doing that at a really young age um, and so then I would get used to going into the bathroom, taking my medicine, brushing my teeth, etc. Um, and I vividly remember like doing that at sleepovers and nobody else really doing that. So I knew I was kind of like ahead of the curve on that but it's because I had to take this allergy medicine and if I forgot the whole next day I would literally suffer. <laughs> So one thing, having a nighttime routine. And you know, since age 10, that has evolved quite a bit. Uh, I take my Zyrtec and Nasonex still every night, but I also take some other vitamins at night. I just choose to take my vitamins at night because I personally feel better after having consumed a whole day of food, water, exercise, coffee, etc., I feel better taking pills on a stomach that is full from all that stuff and a body that has kind of already started to metabolize things that have happened to me throughout the day versus at the very beginning of the day. Um, I kind of don't eat breakfast right away and I typically drink coffee before I eat breakfast, so that's not really the best combination for your stomach, <laughs> for an empty stomach for taking pills. So I currently take a multivitamin I can talk about this in another video but I take a women's multivitamin a women's digestive probiotic but it's also kind of like an enzyme for your immune immune system and digestive tract urinary tract etc um, so I really like that one I feel a big difference in that because I don't always eat a lot of fermented foods like yogurt or sauerkraut or things like that so that probiotic really really helps my digestion which in turn helps my food because if I eat a lot of kind of foods that I'm not normally eating a lot of really kind of greasy unhealthy fried foods which I definitely do eat but if I eat them right before I go to sleep or things like that I don't sleep as well and I wake up feeling not great so because my body's kind of working to digest that stuff the whole night so having a nighttime routine anyway <laughs> I'm getting off track here I take my multivitamin my digestive enzyme slash probiotic I take vitamin D3 um, as an immune system boost and also B complex, which helps. It has B12, B6, um, I believe, really kind of vital vitamins for your energy reproduction um, and stuff like that. So I can talk more about that. If y'all are interested, please let me know in the comments about the vitamins that I take. But long story short, I take the vitamins. I take out my contacts because I do wear contacts. I, if I'm wearing makeup, I wash my face with the makeup eraser. Um, I don't use makeup wipes, face wash, anything like that. My skin is way too sensitive and my skin responds best when I just 
wash it with water with the makeup eraser because it does take off the makeup gently with just water and a cloth i wash the cloth <laughs> but yeah so i don't i don't really do skincare um and i think that's a little bit controversial but it's what works best for me i use a little bit of moisturizer if i need it maybe like once a week um if my skin just looks very dry consistently but i really think the best thing for your skin is just leaving it alone i put on deodorant before i go to sleep because your deodorant takes a while to to kind of absorb into your system and if you put it on in the morning it's not really doing anything is something i learned um from dr dre um she's a really good dermatologist youtuber and she talks about all these things but so putting deodorant on the night before is the most effective way um to kind of have it work because in the morning it has absorbed into your system and then it will work with your sweat glands as you're going throughout the day versus if you put it on in the morning it's absorbing throughout the day into your body still so it's not really working so that's kind of something I learned I don't know if y'all already do that but that is something that I do um, and kind of a couple hours before I'm going to sleep I turn off all the lights in my apartment to start kind of getting my mind ready for sleeping um, so I'll turn on like my oven light and like a lamp over here um, but I turn off all these overhead lights because and I turn on the lamp in my room and just kind of close the blinds just kind of the whole point is being in a routine, just doing the same things, making it feel darker, beginning to let my mind remember that it's nighttime and I'm going to sleep soon. So I do that a few hours before. I keep my room really dark. I have curtains that kind of go over the window. I don't have it here. I'm looking at my window in the frame that y'all can see. <laughs> um, I don't have curtains in this apartment yet i just moved in a few weeks ago but my old apartment i had blackout curtains and those are really important to me because if it's not dark in your room it's harder for you to sleep well so during the night i sleep well and luckily right now as the sun's rising is about the time i wake up so i haven't really needed the super dark curtains yet but that is something that's helpful keeping your room really really dark and if you are kind of nervous in the dark or things like that having a nightlight that comes from another room is really helpful like for me living alone i've had a nightlight in my bathroom where i can see the light um, flickering from under my bedroom door when it's closed at night and so that helps me feel a little bit better but that's something you can do as well because I know feeling anxious or nervous at night is a huge contributing factor to why you might not sleep well so that's just kind of something that I've used as well the kind of nightlight or keeping on a bathroom light or some light nearby um, that you can see under your door um, I turn on a fan the fan noise helps me um, anybody can do kind of whatever they want I know my dad uses a white noise um, repeat it's like a 12 hour track that's just white noise airplane white noise um and that helps him sleep and so kind of whatever i can sleep in silence but having the fan helps me a lot because again going back to that nervousness um hearing noises at night just that are totally normal but can kind of keep you a, w a little bit awake and spooked so having that fan on helps me and also helps me stay cool throughout the night and keeping the room cold is another factor if you can if you don't want to keep the air on super low i know it can be expensive having the fans help a lot and i know in texas we all have ceiling fans in every room because it's so hot but having a cool room is kind of best for your body to sleep because you do naturally your body heat will rise throughout the night and having a schedule i know y'all have heard this before but kind of really trying to go to sleep at the same time and wake up at the same time every single day even on the weekends which nobody really does i'm going to confess i don't even do that but during the week i try to go to sleep within about an hour um as I do on the weekend. So let's say during the week, I go to sleep at 11 or 11.30. Um, I do that every weekday and then I wake up around eight. I know I sleep a lot, but that's just my body. That's what works for me. Getting eight to nine hours of sleep has is how I best function. Um, I can function on seven, but less than that, I don't feel good. So that is what works for me. So I just shared that, but then for example on the weekends i will go to sleep around midnight or one maybe at the latest and even one i don't feel very good the next morning when i wake up around nine still um so again just kind of trying to keep a schedule will really help versus going to sleep early during the week and then staying up super late on the weekend it's going to be very difficult to go back to a good sleep schedule for Monday when you really need to wake up for work or what or school or whatever you're doing. So keeping a schedule. Only sleep 
in your bed. Um, and I know there's a lot of interpretations of that, but what I'm saying is use your bedroom for sleep. Really try to keep the rooms in your house separate if you can afford to. Not doing homework or working or anything like that in your bed is really helpful. So your brain associates your bed, your physical place where you are is kind of where your brain associates what task you're supposed to be doing uh, subconsciously. So if I'm sitting at my desk over there, I feel like I should be doing work. If I did all my work in my bed, when I got back in my bed to sleep, I would feel like, okay, I need to be doing work. Like, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't work. So I don't even actually sit in my bed at all throughout the day. I sit on the couch. Like I make a really conscious effort to sit on the couch or sit on a chair out in the living room, sit at this counter right here. Because if I sit in my bed, even just to chill, like watch YouTube videos or stuff like that, eventually I am not going to be able to sleep as well in my bed and I know it's kind of like a weird taboo thing but I have noticed that so those are kind of my tips on how I have learned how to sleep really well sleep better and if you have to you can resort to things like melatonin um ambient though I wouldn't suggest it it's a um a scheduled substance a controlled substance so if you really needed to use that if you were in some type of chronic pain or things like that I would mainly suggest melatonin because it's a naturally occurring substance in your body already, um, but supplementing it would help in the case that you really, really needed to sleep. But though when I do take melatonin or z or things like that, I wake up extremely groggy. So that's not what works best for me. Having the nighttime routine is probably the most critical aspect of my sleep, but you gotta see what works for you. And I really appreciate y'all listening to these tips. Let me know if anything I've said is helpful or if you have other tips that I haven't thought of. Um, I would really appreciate hearing that. I also, I forgot to mention one thing. I do read in bed and I, I don't, I know people say don't use a screen about an hour before bed, but I don't use a screen about, 30 minutes before bed and I just end up reading a book or several books for about 30 minutes before I go to sleep and I keep my phone and my computer on dark mode which is the dark screen in the background and also nighttime mode at around 9 p.m. so like a yellower screen comes on and I'm not getting as much blue light which is what keeps you awake um, and blue light is actually fine it mimics the sun the sun's kind of impact on our awake feeling um but yeah too much blue light at night from a screen from a computer a phone is not going to help you sleep it's going to trick your brain into thinking you need to stay awake so i forgot that one but i threw that in there at the end <laughs> anyway thank you so much for watching if you liked this video please like it please share it with someone who you think needs it <laughs> i would appreciate that and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy this content and want to see more um i'm not sure what the next video will be but y'all will see it when it is up I appreciate y'all watching. Thank you so much. Bye.